Hello again, everyone. Welcome to this edition of Focus Vandalia. My name is Rich Hopkins. I'm the communications manager for the city, and we're coming to you today from Benchwood Road. This, of course, a couple of months removed from those devastating Memorial Day tornadoes that rumbled through parts of Vandalia. The cleanup effort, for the most part, is underway. The next big project that city officials are looking at is what lessons we've learned from this. We all remember the night back in May when more than a dozen powerful tornadoes carved a path of destruction through the Miami Valley, with two of them hitting right here in Vandalia. In the moments leading up to that storm, Vandalia emergency crews pulled out all of the stops to make sure people were aware of the approaching danger. Within uh, 30 seconds of that happening, our uh, 911 center um, turned our, tornado, our weather warning sirens on and began giving um, radio announcements that we were in the path of a potentially tornado, uh, a potential tornado. Um, so in that period of time, our hyper reach system, which went automatically uh, to that warning, uh, launched um, about 10,350 messages um, to um, uh, various, uh, all the numbers in our database, basically. Now that we're a few weeks removed from the storm, Vandalia Fire Chief Chad Follick and the Division of Fire have just finished this. It's an after-action report that details the events of Memorial Day 2019 and the response to the storms from city staff. We got a phone call regarding a um, report of 25 people trapped in the basement of the church on, North, on uh, Benchwood Road. So crews went right to that area. Uh, affected uh, or a simple rescue of uh, just moving some debris. Uh, that had been a church group that had returned from Kings Island that sought refuge in a basement area, bathroom area there, um, and were blocked by debris when the building took a direct, pretty much a direct hit or a glancing blow hit. Follick says the storms did damage structures, but it could have been much worse. Uh, we had zero people injured and zero people killed, and we had nobody transported to the hospital as a result of the tornado. So that, that um, by itself is probably the most important um, good thing to come out of the storm is that no one was hurt, no one was killed. Um, everything that was, da was damaged can be replaced. Um, so that's what we're grateful for. Follick was also grateful that one of the hardest hit areas, an area that was actually hidden from plain sight, did not have any casualties to report. We did have one area of uh, Benchwood Road uh, that we discovered a very large debris pattern that had stretched back into the wooded area into a field uh, that had a couple of vehicles in it, uh, two collapsed structures. Uh, we got we came a little bit concerned because we did not get a primary search on that uh, on the, in the darkness that night before. This story helps to highlight another lesson learned that's in the report. The need for rescue crews to have access to drones to survey storm damage and very quickly allocate resources. Uh, that area was actually discovered as a result of a drone that we were using to take some, some aerial photographs, do some aerial surveillance. Uh, so we realized that the importance of that drone footage really helped us to determine where there were areas that were uh, that we had not got to, also to give us a good, a good, a better assessment of roof damage, uh, which we found several buildings that from standing in the street looking at them were fine, but as you got on the roof, you realize that they did get a hit. The roof had did get lifted up or turned or damaged in some way. To sum it all up, the storms caused a lot of damage, but in the big picture, Vandalia was lucky. 47 buildings were, in, were inspected check for safety, utilities controlled, four were uh, de deemed destroyed, um, uh, eight were deemed major damage, uh, 24 were damaged minorly, um, eight were affected, and then another three were no damage at all. So that, came, that can range from any place from siding damage up to and including complete destruction, um, which uh, we are very fortunate to only have four. You never want any. But if you have to have four, I guess that's better than 400 or thousands that they're dealing with south of us or in Trotwood or any other places. Follick says he was overwhelmed by all of the assistance the community offered in the days and weeks following the storms, particularly the help from our school district. I received a text message from a, a wrestling coach, um, a guidance counselor at the high school on, on the early morning Tuesday, 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning and asked if there was any way they could help, please let them know. 
um, subsequently on Tuesday when we started identifying areas that we could not get into because of tree debris, uh, we started to try to identify uh, volunteer groups that may be able to come assist us in going on the private property and bringing that material out to the street where we could collect it. Um, I made a phone call early in the day on Tuesday. Uh, within an hour, I had um, football, basketball, wrestlers, uh, coaching staff, um, parents, uh, boosters. Um, I cannot tell you how grateful we are and how grateful the people of Benchwood Miller Lane are uh, for their assistance. Uh, we only really had one major volunteer group. We did pick up a Cub Scout group on the weekend and we had a local business come out and help on the weekend. But from Tuesday until the following Tuesday, I had multiple discussions with coaching staff at the high school and multiple times they send out 10 to 15 kids to help drag out, athletes to help drag out material. So uh, when, when they say that we are aviators is a community slogan, that's definitely what we saw in that, that week time frame. So I am extremely grateful and extremely proud to say that I'm a member of this organization and that I'm an alumnus that kids from the my alumni where I, came, where I came from or out helping the community. It was, really, it was really a great thing to see. You can expect new policies to be in place in the near future as the lessons we learn from these storms are incorporated into any future storm response. That's what we do after action reports for is that we can see what, what went right, what went wrong, and what we can improve upon and hopefully uh, moving forward. We never want to say this will never happen again, but I don't think anybody would ever say that they were prepared for an outbreak like this before. Um, so I, I think that's now time to be prepared for about anything that can happen. So the plan here at the Vandalia Division of Fire is to take that after action report and implement some of those suggestions and changes so we're even better prepared the next time something like this happens. That's going to do it for this edition of Focus Vandalia. I'm Rich Hopkins. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.